Hi, my name is Joe from Austria, and you are watching DJV. Enjoy the show. All right, Chevy, are you ready to start the day? Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go? You gotta scratch first? Okay, get it out, man, get it out. Scratch, 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 scratch. Scratch, scratch, he's still scratching. Okay, now you're ready? Now you're ready, come up here, come up here. Come on up here, just watch where you put your paws. Okay, okay, oh, no, not comfortable with that? Okay, all right, cool. This is an awkward morning, hello. We're in Weyburn, Saskatchewan. Just did our pre-chip, we're actually ready to uh, put her in gear and put the pedal to the floor, as they say. Today we're mostly just gonna be traveling across North Dakota. I'm an hour and a half from the border with North Dakota and Saskatchewan. And then it's just gonna be cruising across the state and ending off in Fargo, North Dakota. We gotta unload there tomorrow morning. We got this lumber on our trailer here behind us still. And it's pretty heavy, I don't want it. I'm gonna bring it over there and give it to them. And then we're gonna to go to Minnesota and uh, pick up our glass and hopefully start making it home tomorrow yet. Like on the way, we won't get home, but hopefully we'll make a good distance on the way home. I gotta sneeze, one second, excuse me. Whoa, Chevy, do you see that? Whoa, I'm okay, I'm okay. That's all right, yeah, okay, okay. You gonna come check on me? Okay, I'm okay. Thank you, thanks for checking on me. Good boy. Where are we? I don't know, man. I don't know, it's so flat, it's so open. I know, right? Okay, okay, watch where you put your paws. There you go. Such a good boy. Such a good boy. You ready to go now? Can we go now? I can't go with you on my lap like this. You're not a lap dog. Well, you could be. That's okay. Okay. I need to go. I need to go. Good boy. Good boy. Good way to start the morning. Bear hugs from a Chevy bear. Right? Okay, let's get on the road. So we drove 984 kilometers yesterday. We got uh, another 898 to do today. Let's just getting my odometer, tripometer set here. I reset my tripometer every day so I know how far I drove. And I also reset my fuel data so that I can tell how much fuel I'm burning. We're gonna stop in Minot, North Dakota for some American fuel because it's cheaper, a lot cheaper. Lights on, truck and gear. Release the brakes, and here we go. I've stayed at this truck stop quite a few times. I actually just went in here for breakfast. I had a pretty good breakfast. It's called the Main Track Restaurant. Had a nice Denver omelet. And just thinking about it makes me want to go in for another one. Well, we're at the Flying J in Minot, North Dakota. I decided I'm gonna shower at the end of my day at the Flying J in Fargo instead. That way I go to bed and I'm all nice and clean rather than just showering halfway through my day and then, you know, you get it. So I got Subway here. Subway for lunch, I love Subway. Oh, it's like, it's gotta be my favorite. Cause you know, it's not the most unhealthy. I know it's not the, the most healthy. But it's not the most unhealthy either. It's a decent option for fast food, I think. And they make it right in front of you, mostly all fresh vegetables and stuff. I like it. So I've been here way too long. I've been here an hour now. I only wanted to take my half hour break here. But we did get all fueled up. We're ready to go. We have another 461 kilometers. Or what would that be? Six times four, 24, 204, 250, 300 miles or so to get done today. A little less than that, about 275 miles. Uh, and then I already called the customer for tomorrow morning. We're gonna deliver this lumber. I showed you the lumber, right? I'll show you it again, just in case you didn't watch yesterday's video, but this doesn't give you a free pass to skip yesterday's video. You should go back and watch that video too. It makes a lot more sense if you follow every day, then you know why I am where I am. And then when I get home time, it doesn't surprise you because you know the vlog will be home time. So every time I'm at home, people are always surprised. Oh, you're not in the truck today. You're giving yourself away that you didn't watch yesterday's video. <laughs> Here, let's go take a look at this load. Real quick. Oh. It's a beautiful day out. It's a hot 
day out. There we go. Just a simple load, 10 lifts. So I gotta be there for 8 a.m. tomorrow. They'll have this off of my trailer in 15 minutes flat. That's including taking all the straps off and rolling them up too. So we're set. You ready, Chevy? You ready to rock and roll? Well, we're gonna be doing some rolling. I don't know if we're gonna be doing any rocking today. But I'm not really in a rock kind of mood, but you never know. The day is still young, sort of. Actually, <laughs> it's five o'clock in the afternoon. I guess the day is not that young. It just feels like it's earlier because the sun stays up so long. All right, let's get out of here. Been here way too long again. Did not want my break to go this long. pull out of here without hitting anybody that's the goal or dragging my trailer over someone's fender that'd be embarrassing Chevy stop sniffing my sandwich you already had your food buddy can't give you too much you're supposed to be losing weight just like me I'm supposed to be losing weight too I don't know what happened to that you know my goal for this summer was to lose weight so far I've gained weight mm. yep Turn left on US2. There's a guy in the pump there, in the first pump. Turn right on Frontage Road, then turn left. He, he was in that pump when I got here, and I've been here over an hour. He's had his truck parked in that fuel island for over an hour. He was inside, he went to the bathroom, I saw him go to Subway, sat down and ate. He was waiting for a fax. Then a fax came through and he had to fax something back and wait for another response. This was all while I was in there. I was just watching him like a hawk, just trying to, you know, signal to him with my eyes, like, go and park your truck, buddy. You're parked in the pumps. I was so close to just going right up to him and saying, okay, why is your truck in the pumps? There's a lineup behind him. Trucks have to back up and go into a different line. It's just so ignorant. And he probably doesn't even realize it. Probably doesn't even realize it. He was yapping on his phone the entire time. Uh, in a foreign language, uh, I think it was, I think it was Punjabi, uh, it's East Indian languages, blabbering, 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 I, and he was talking so loud too, you could just hear him talk on his phone across the whole truck stop, it's like, oh yeah, you're one of, you're one of those drivers, leave your trucks in the aisle, fuel islands for over an hour, that's so rude, and there, there was plenty of parking, you saw it, we just left the parking lot, you saw it, there's plenty of parking, but, you know, that's all I'll say about that. I love coming out here to Minot. Why not visit Minot, right? Got a massive, massive Air Force base here. Huge. We have an Air Force base just north of here uh, in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Pretty much uh, a couple of hundred miles north of here. Sort of pales in comparison, but I wonder who built their Air Force base first. I know our Moose Jaw base has been there for quite a while, but I'm surprised that we don't have more of a military. I'm really surprised. You know, everyone you ask, most people when you talk about this in Canada, they're like, oh, we don't need a military. I'm like, yes, we do. Everybody needs a military. What, what's to stop people from invading us? And the answer that I hate to hear the most is what I actually do hear the most when they say, well, who's going to invade us when we're right next door to America? And I'm just like, yeah, that's true. That's very true. No one's going to invade us because that's a direct threat to the U.S. The U.S. will come in and take them out for us. But isn't that a little bit shameful having to rely on your neighbor's military to protect your own territory? Like, isn't that a little bit shameful? Like, we've got a great military, don't don't get me wrong, it's just really small. What is there, there's only like 68,000 active personnel? You correct me if I'm wrong, there's a few mil Canadian military people in my comment section. How many people, active personnel, do we actually have? And you know, they're, they're top of the line, they have top of the line equipment and you know, with technology, we're pretty comparable to the U.S. The U.S. obviously has a little bit more advanced gadgets because they don't uh, share everything with the world that they make, understandably. So they have all this technology that we probably don't even know about, which is pretty cool. Once again, I'm glad they're the good guys. But uh, we, 
we have really good soldiers that are highly trained, they just, there's just not a lot of them. There's not nearly enough military in Canada to protect our three borders. We, I mean, our three coastlines and our border with the U.S. We don't have to protect ourselves from the U.S., so we're lucky. We're geographically lucky. But I don't know, sometimes it makes me nervous. Like, what? We can't protect ourselves. You look at the U.S., huh? They're locked down. Nobody's invading this territory. Nobody. Anyone who dares attack the homeland is going to be obliterated. They will be erased from history. Their whole entire country will be turned to glass. Like that's that's kind of nice to have that comfort. Like when I'm in the US here, I feel safe. Or if there was a war, you know. Meh, that's just me rambling about things. Sometimes I think of these things going down the road. Uh, these things come up to my mind because I go back and forth between countries a lot, right? And you go to the US, you see military convoys all the time. There's military everywhere. Lots of it, everywhere. It's not in like a threatening way, but it, a lot of military. It makes me feel good. I just wish we had a little bit bigger of a budget, a little bit more in Canada. Like I wish we wouldn't be so, is the word naive correct? That we wouldn't be so uh, trusting that no one is ever going to attack us. I mean, you never know. You never know. We have a lot of natural resources and a lot of stuff that I see firsthand every day doing this job. We got a lot of very rich resources. There's a lot of money in our in our ground. Not just in oil, but in gold, silver, precious minerals, diamonds. We also control uh, the Northwest Passage. That's Canadian territory. And as that's becoming more of a shipping route, we're gonna have to have a Navy that can properly patrol that. Otherwise, the US is just gonna come in and take control of it. And what are we gonna do, right? Once again, I'm glad they're the good guys, but still, we should be able to take care of our own business. I don't know, what do you think? What do you think? Well, we're just coming up to the interstate here. Finally gonna get some four lane highway back. That's gonna be nice. <laughs> Not that traffic is really bad here in North Dakota or anything. <laughs> but interstates are always nice. You know, no stoplights, no small towns to slow down for, just go. Here it is, right here by this water tower. So we're gonna turn onto I-94 eastbound, and then we have another 150 kilometers or about another uh, 90 miles or so. Then we'll be in Fargo. It says 96 miles to Fargo on that sign there. Oh, that's pretty close. I was just guessing. My GPS talks in metric, so I always sort of gotta guess what how many miles it is. There's the interstate. Turn left on to I-94 East. Get ourselves around this corner here. My truck needs a truck wash so badly. Haven't had time, it's just been go, 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 go. That'll be nice, I guess we'll get to uh, Fargo around, what, 9 p.m., just before 10 o'clock. Which is perfect, because I want to deliver this freight at 8 a.m. tomorrow, so that's 10 hours. It's exactly the time I need to reset my logs for a new day. In the U.S., they make you stop for 10 consecutive hours before you can start another 14-hour day. And within those 14 hours, you can only drive 11 of them and be on duty for 12 of them. So you can have an extra on-duty, not driving time. So if you're like loading freight or unloading, stuff like that. In Canada, it's a little different. Uh, you only have to stop for eight consecutive hours and that will begin a new 16 hour day. But you still need to have at least 10 hours off 
in a 24 hour period. So from midnight to midnight on your home terminal time. So if you stop for eight consecutive hours, you're gonna have to get two hours off duty or in the sleep or berth throughout your day, throughout your 16 hour day. Uh, so you can split that up into half hour segments if you want. So you could stop for eight consecutive hours and then throughout your day stop for four 30 minute breaks and then you have your 10 hours off. But you can't stop for 15 minutes, you have to stop for at least 30 or it doesn't count towards your 10. A little different. Or you can just stop for the full 10 consecutive hours all at once and then you don't have to stop for any breaks legally throughout the day. You do have to stop and check your load, check your tires and stuff, obviously they want to see that, but there's no like mandatory half hour break like in the US. But in Canada, within your 16 hour day, you can drive 13 of those hours and you can be on duty for 14 of them. So that's the way that it's a little difficult to explain the hours of service. <laughs> that's a whole video all in itself. It's very rare that I enter Fargo from this direction. Usually I'm going from Minnesota out west, not very often coming from Western Canada, this way. <laughs> Didn't even recognize the town I was coming into here. We're just around the corner from uh, the Flying J, I'm gonna try to find myself a parking spot there, grab a shower. And uh, cozy on in for the night. Get some of these bugs off the windshield. That is a huge, what is that? Is that a hospital or is that a casino? That's a hospital, ambulance, oh, okay. <laughs> sort of looks like a casino. I guess a casino would have a few more extra neon lights on it, I guess. You never know. Some casinos are actually pretty, what would you call it, bland or pretty uh, incognito. You wouldn't expect it to be a casino. In 1.7 kilometers, take exit 349A on right to I-29 South. You heard her, we're just about there. I'm actually pretty tired. I'm looking forward to just letting my head hit that pillow pretty hard. I hope there's gonna be parking here for us. It's not too late. But then again, you know. 500 meters, turn right on 32nd Avenue South. Summer daylight hours makes it feel like it's not so. It is actually pretty late, it's 10 o'clock. Thanks. Parking, parking. Yeah, there's lots of parking spots. Oh, good, good. Turn oh, right yeah. Avenue south, then turn right. That's what we're doing, Mandy. You can't turn left from here. What else am I gonna do? Can't even go straight. That's some beautiful colors in turn the sky right there. Street south. Wow, I love how these cameras, they pick that, that low light up so well. All right, where do we want to park? Where do we Turn want to right park? Okay, south. Mandy, we're here. Thanks for your help. You can be quiet now. I sort of want to park here. Are these reserved? Well, this guy's got a reefer. Oh yeah, these are all reserved. Painted on the... I don't want to park beside the reefer. I think I might come back and... Oh, this guy's got a reefer too. And there's a pickup parked in that parking spot. That's rude. That's rude. That guy's got a big screen TV in his truck. That's cool. This Volvo is sticking way out. I'm going to have to turn around if I want to back in on the right here because I'm not blindsiding it into a spot. There might be a spot right here. Nope. Nope. Bobtail in there. Bobtail. Come on, guys. I saw lots of spots from the road, so I know that there is. There is places to park. Seems a lot fuller now that I'm down here. <laughs> you know what, I see that spot. Where did I see that spot? I like to park in areas where it's easy to back into so that uh, if I do get a neighbor beside me, that, uh, I don't have to worry about other people hitting me. I think this is 
is gonna be my spot. We'll see if we can pick up the uh, internet signal from back here. No reefers, no reefers. All right, good. We actually moved to a spot right near the building, which is a lot better for internet signal. We've gotta get a couple of videos up on the internet for you tonight. So I will see you right here in the morning. Two minutes for you, 10 hours for me. Oh, oh, a good night, had a good night. Oh, so that was a long drive. That <laughs> felt like a long drive. Maybe just because it was uh, a lot of two-lane highways, they always take a little longer than usual. The interstates always make things seem a lot faster because they are. <laughs> It's amazing how much time you save just by having no towns to slow down for, no stoplights, no real intersections, all overpasses. You know, the interstate system is brilliant. It was Dwight Eisenhower that built them, right? I was the president at the time, or did he, was he the president when they got completed? I don't know exactly. I know Eisenhower had something to do with them, but I wish we had some of them. Where's Chevy? Where's Chevy? Let's go deliver our freight. Thanks for watching today, everybody. Tomorrow's a new day. I hope you join us. Hit that like button and that subscribe button. And we'll see you tomorrow. Hey, this is John from St. Petersburg, Florida, and you're watching Trucker Josh Vlogs on YouTube.